Now let's take a look at application analysis tasks for the network analyst. And again, it's just a short list for you of some of the things you may do when you're analyzing performance of an application. You may be interested in determining exactly how much bandwidth a particular application takes. And this is a great thing to do before you roll out an application across a network. You've got to find out if your infrastructure will support that application. In addition, you may want to identify the application protocols and ports in use so you know what you want to allow through a firewall and which ports the application might use so that when you're doing analysis later, you can quickly build a filter to look at traffic to and from those ports. You also may want to check out whether an application is secure when it's sending data across a network. So in that case, when you pick up the traffic, you should not be able to read the data that's crossing the network. Let's just take a look at a very quick instance of where we're detecting HTTP errors in a trace file. I'm going to open up a trace file called http-errors101.pcapng. And in this trace file, we can see that a client is making a DNS request for www.chapelu.com. We see a DNS response coming back. We see another DNS request going out, but this time it's looking for an AAAA record, which is an IPv6 address request, whereas before it was looking for an A record, which is IPv4. We can see the client sends out a SYN packet to the server, we see a SYN ACK coming back, and we see the final ACK of the three-way handshake. The next thing that happens is the client is making a request for whatsapp.html, but here is an error response. And once you understand the errors that an application can transmit, you can use Wireshark to look for any errors of that type. I've selected packet number nine in this trace file, and we can see that HTTP responses include a status code. And anytime the status code is greater than 399, it's an error. In Wireshark, I'll right mouse click on the status code line and prepare a filter based on the value. I'm only preparing a filter, I'm not applying it this time. I want to prepare a filter based on the selected value and Wireshark creates a filter for me based on that field. As I mentioned before though, any response codes that are greater than 399 are an error. So I'm going to change this filter to read greater than 399. And then I'll apply it to the entire trace file. We can see that we have two application errors in this trace file. Again, I highly recommend that you take the course called Create and Apply Display Filters to master techniques such as this. In the next section of this course, we'll be taking a look at the legal issues of network analysis.